What is going on? It is your boy Daddy Mac and welcome back to another Madden 24 Seattle Seahawks franchise. Last week, if you've missed it, we got our first W against the Giants. Now the game at overall was uh, a pretty good game actually, it came down to the last minute. This week we're gonna go ahead and take a dive into our bye week, but also we're gonna go ahead and play week six against the Bengals. And going over everything, let's take a look and recap what we have done so far. As of right now, we are the worst team in the league. Last week we were at number 31 and we're tied with a couple of teams with one win. I think we can go ahead and start getting sophisticated and get a couple of back to back to back W's uh, and I know I'm kind of reaching. I think it's totally achievable. I don't think we'll win the division considering the 49ers are the 49ers, right? But I think we can at least make a run to a wild card spot. We should be able to beat the Rams. We should be able to, you know, overtake the Eagles with the record that they have. I think we still can make the wild card as long as we we don't lose anymore and we just win i don't think we can win out but i do think that we can make a pretty good run as of right now so kind of looking over everything i gave you a kind of a preview as to where we are in terms of how we stand compared to other teams we do have the number two overall offense so overall total offensive yards we are number two just really just inches behind the cowboys passing yards wise we are number one we do throw the ball a lot rushing yards we are kind of in the middle of the pack for trying to get a little bit more established when it comes to the run points per game we're also top 10 passing touchdowns we are definitely not top 10 or rushing touchdowns i believe we only have like three four rushing touchdowns we get the most first downs but we just cannot turn those into touchdowns as you can see here our offensive percentage is actually not that great we're actually the last team in the league when it comes to red zone efficiency so that's another thing that we got to work on we're actually playing somewhat like the real seahawks defense Defensively, we have a lot of work to do. I think we're last. We're dead last by 300 yards. We're dead last in pass yards allowed. Points allowed is kind of inflated. We've thrown a couple of pick sixes. And sack wise, we don't have the most sacks, but we are definitely top 10. Interceptions, we are also top 10. So we can get the ball when we need to. We just got to be efficient on defense. We got to keep the defense off the field. That's been the problem. I really want to keep Jordan Brooks, but I don't think that we're going to be able to keep him considering his interest in resigning. Noah Fant is definitely a tight end that I kind of want to keep. Let's see how he continues to perform. He is definitely an asset to us. Same thing with Nuosu and definitely Damian Lewis. He's not a bad at left guard. Other than that, I'm completely fine with letting everybody walk with the exception of Bobby Wagner. Maybe we can get him on another year. Simming on to week six. I think the game plan is definitely to slow down Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. I don't even know what Joe Burrow's X factor is. Let's take a look. Scouting over the Bengals, they do have Jamar Chase with double me. We're definitely going to double him up. We're going to play a lot of man coverage, or at least try to, and put the top safety over as a man coverage in addition to the corner against Jamar Chase. Hopefully that slows him down a little bit and then joe burrow we really do have to try to slow him down i mean these two are a pretty lethal combination t higgins is another player that we got to look out for so if we lock down jamar chase we got to be ready to lock down t higgins so another thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to line up our man by route running route running possibly speed while doubling up jamar chase so hopefully that works out if we look over our weekly strategy i do want to do half pads and i'm going to split everybody up just for fatigue purposes also we're gonna want to defend the medium pass because jamar chase is gonna be all over the darn field for the offense same thing i want to go in and split everything with half pads and i do not want to risk an injury i also do not want to risk the fatigue factor furthermore we do want to watch the pass with especially with chw i think what happened last week we were really successful with throwing short and utilizing the play action and then capitalize on the run game so i think if we can go ahead and do that again this week we should be okay finally let's go ahead and take a look at our game day goals i did think that what you have to do in order to you know keep this game under control we have to go ahead and win the turnover battle we cannot afford to turn the ball over especially with the Bengals offense that can be hot and can get hot at any moment we also want to go ahead and keep the defense off the field to see if we can go ahead and produce 300 plus offensive yards and then also defensively 
I don't think we can stop them to allow 14 points or less. So we're going to go ahead and stick with 24 points or less. Finally, with our weekly game plan, we do want to get to Joe Burrow. I do agree with that. We want to sack the quarterback at least five times. I'm, I'm going to be blitzing a lot. And I think if we can get to Joe Burrow, we can potentially win this game. It's going to be a really tough game. What I did for the bye week, I went ahead and just did the team bonding event. That way we can get our morale up. But also that means that we're going to be way too relaxed. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive and let's see how we perform in this game. It's the NFL on EA Sports. All eyes are on Jamar Chase. He's going to be a busy man in the passing game. It's the Bengals and the Seahawks. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. It's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paycor Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Today, we've got a Week 6 matchup for you here, as it'll be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gunn. To my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Seahawks, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. And I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. It's too early in the season. Get back to the basics, get his game going again. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Throwing now is Geno. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe, and he brings it back to right around the 26 yard line. A part of why they came to this week with a winning record is that they feed off of mistakes like this, and now it's a prime opportunity. Just moments in the game to get a short field touchdown off of their big defensive play. Now on the other side, they were already the underdog in this one. They just made their uphill battle just a little bit tougher. The Bengals offense here ready to rock and roll. Joe Burrow is the man at quarterback. You enjoyed watching that game tape, didn't you? Yeah, Last week's game. Good. Four I mean, touchdowns, one pick. Now, you were a little upset about the pick. I didn't know if you would play him this week or not <laughs> if you were the head coach. Hey, they got the win. They will throw on first down with Burrow. That's caught by the tight end, Drew Sample. We've got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. 11, 11, 11. Now a three-time thousand-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be. Right? When they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. Extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. So they've got another play in their pocket. They're going to have to call it right now. No field goal here. McPherson's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 nothing. I mean, when you look at their talent, you would think that they'd be much better. Overall, I don't think there's any question you'd have to say that they've underachieved. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. That looks like it's going to be two empty possessions now to start this football game. Does that change how they manage the rest of this one? I think it does a little bit, but not by too much because you're right. You get the extra rush, you get a chance to heal up. A little more importance on what they're getting done because they carry it with them for essentially two weeks. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. And the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike. Big Mike. Now Burrow. That's caught by the tight end, Irv Smith Jr. And that was some effort, but it would appear that he's going to come up about a yard short. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are, but let's face it, partner. They can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time. 
Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Well, we saw plenty of that during his much-heralded college career. He parlayed that into becoming a first-round selection. And now here he is making interceptions in the National Football League. And this is a guy that has all the physical tools, but the thing that sets him apart is what he's got between his ears. And that's the sixth sense for knowing where the football is going. After the interception, here's Smith. He's going to get this complete here to lock it. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line. The way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down and they're playing with extreme confidence. And he's got another first down. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. And Smith, and this throw finds Smith and Jigba. Now Gino. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Seahawks are going to have first and goal. Gino now to throw. Struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. And the Bengals are going to take over at their own two-yard line. Partner, there's no other way you could describe it because that was absolutely just gut-wrenching for that offense. They were right on the precipice. Points were available. All they had to do was just fall forward, and they were going to put them up on the board. Instead, a long drive ends in heartbreak. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it. Occasionally, you break a tackle. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And they're going to get the first down here across the 15-yard line. On oh, first and ten, Joe Burrow. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 17 and a Cincinnati first down. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. And that's caught one more time by Boyd. On second down, here's Mixon. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. Here's Burrow. He completes it to Burrow. Okay, and we will take a short break. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Felt like the type of play that can spark a defense and swing some momentum. Almost felt like a take that type of a play, didn't it, partner? And he's brought down after a very nice game. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. They'll let the fullback try and take him home. Power on power, but he's not going to get in. 11 MT take. Mixon. He is going nowhere in a hurry as he is going to lose yardage here in a big way. Doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bengals go 98 yards and finish it off in the end zone. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. But we'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is because the great ones, they'll throw four or five picks, and when they'll hurt their team, they won't hurt their confidence. They'll think something is just wrong with the ball. Play action. It's Smith. Catch is made by Metcalf. Here's Smith. Now wasted time going right back to DK Metcalf. Walker will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four yard. Absolutely. I mean, the fact that they moved the ball so well should lead you to the decision that maybe we should go for it right here. Also, as a head coach, Show some confidence in your team. This is the time to get it going. And individually, I don't think you should just think about the ball with the ball either. The ball has to be set higher. 
with this beginning. It worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the game. And now look at this. Big game, but fumble. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time, we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. Not able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. He's got his target. That's complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. On first down, it's Smith. He completes this to Walker. And this will leave him a yard short. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. They'll run for it. It's Walker. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. And, oh, boy, nobody wants to see this. That's the running back, Kenneth Walker. Now Smith. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Myers' kick is good. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. In motion left is Higgins. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And that is not fooling anyone. On third down, Burrow. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First down, here's Burrow. He finds his man complete. That's Boyd. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Throwing for Smith on the out route, and it's caught. And all the way in for the Cincinnati score. Bird Smith Jr., 40 yards. And the Bengals will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets a head of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. They've got to try to at least work their way into field goal range to try to muster something out of this drive. And I'm going to go ahead and date myself one more time because I want quarter to Smokey and the Bandit there. They've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Way from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the round, and that one winds up incomplete. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked by Logan Wilson. And a super return as he gets us all the way down inside the 25-yard line. That's now a second interception in as many weeks from his linebacker position. And think about all the different techniques he has to employ in a passing situation. Trying to get it to Chase, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Devin Witherspoon. And the Seahawks are going to get the football back at their own 17. The one side gets an interception, but their defense comes on the field and picks them right back up by getting a pick of their own. And I think you saw the same thing that I did, Brandon. As he ran off the field after making that play, we saw his quarterback seek him out and offer a personal thank you. Now Gino. He'll get that to Charbonnet. It could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone. And did exactly that, knocking that pass away. Uh, he's going to be brought down there in the field of play. And the clock will run. No timeouts. They will not have the chance to bring out the field goal unit. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in week six. We'll get started up at Cleveland Brown Stadium in Cleveland, and it's the Niners who have the lead in that one. Christian McCaffrey has a touchdown there. From there, we head down to the Sunshine State to check on the Jaguars at home in Jacksonville. And you can see there is the visiting Colts who have the lead in that one. 
Michael Pittman, a touchdown reception. Finally, we're off to Atlanta. Check on the Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Jacoby Brissett has thrown a touchdown pass. A lot of praise for what they did to get this lead, but also a little bit of scolding because they got to take better care of the football in the second half. But do you and I both know? Here's Burrow setting up to throw it over the middle. That's caught by Chase. 11 MT, 11 MT. Inside handoff to Mixon. A good burst there gets him seven up to midfield. If you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Able to find the open man. That's complete. They'll get this one down there to 20 yard line. 12, 12, 12. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. From the right hash, this from 33. McPherson's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. And they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break. Smith on third down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. From the gun, here's Smith. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. They're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just set up for three, except in certain situations, try to ice the game, that sort of deal. Let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Burrow's throw taken in here by Chase. And stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. On first and ten, Joe Burrow. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. Ten yards on the touchdown pass. Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. Come up on third down. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. That's Allworth, who was a Hall of Famer with the Chargers back in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, the man they called Bambi. So if you're in that type of territory, catch the same number of passes he caught. They snap it to Smith. And it's caught. And that's a touchdown, but hold on. There is a flag down on the field. We'll have to see what this is about. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result yes, is six time. points. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. They'll set up a screen to Charbonnet. <laughs> Still going. They can't stop him. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. On first and ten, it's Chardonnay. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. Smith now to throw. Left side here, taken in by Metcalf. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. Eluding the prank. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Geno Smith, his 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. And the Seahawks have made it a one-score game again. And all of a sudden, they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here. Otherwise, they're in danger of doing the old... He ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. Now Smith on third and goal. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. They're 
passing here, Joe Burrow. And he is caught, and he works three. There he goes left side. A big play there for Cincinnati. 11, 11, 11. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Now Burrow. Touchdown, Bengals. When they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? In a completed pass. To throw is Smith. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Now a tough spot for Geno Smith and company after the sack. It's third and long. Then his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Open man is Chase complete. Here's Burrow. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. This team started sluggish, and it really didn't get any better from there. And trailing big here in this fourth quarter. And Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. They'll run for it with Charbonnet. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 40. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Yeah, he's got Smith and Jigba. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Out of the gun, a give to Charbonnet. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. From the red zone now, Smith. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawk touchdown. From 19 yards away. And the Seahawks have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Really a tussle seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives and a two-score lead. I think here now you just you go conservative, right? Run the football, hit the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after them right here. I'm but Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is of all those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. This game was a tough game to swallow. I mean, our defense battled. They battled as much as they could, but the interception problem that we cannot get rid of is continuing to eat at the offense. Now, we got a new injury. Ken Walker is out for at least five weeks, which is actually a really big hit. You guys did see that we cannot run the ball with Zach Charbonnet, not as effectively as we want to be. We only had 73 offensive rush yards. We held Joe Mixon um, to 75, if I I am not mistaken 77 but even then we held him pretty good all game defense was just gassed at the end if you look at the offensive pass yards 447 pass yards for the Bengals, 489 for the seahawks with geno smith he had a pretty good game in the air with the exception of the turnovers another big thing that we really did not do good at we didn't we didn't perform in the red zone again geno smith did get hurt for a play and that's why you see drew lock there five pass touchdowns two interceptions and four turnovers. I mean, our defense battled. I'm really proud of this defense. The exception of the pass yards that we allowed. It was really hard. It was really, really hard. I mean, 23 yards before he got hurt and 30 rush yards for Zach Charbonnet. Our offense just needs to be better in general in the red zone. We had plenty of opportunities and we could not convert. Jackson Smith and Zigba had a really good game. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, the only one alongside Will Disley who had a touchdown. Now, with that here, Bobby Wagner had him Himself a pretty good game three tackles for loss 14 tackles six solo tackles Devin weatherspoon got two interceptions both of those were perfectly timed same thing with well here's the four turnovers that we ultimately caused the fumble that we forced with bobby wagner was simply amazing jaron reed had himself a pretty good game i mean we we just couldn't pressure joe burrow as much as we wanted to so yeah we still have work to do so on to the next week make sure you guys leave a like and i'll see you guys on the next video